praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a blessing once again I come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There has been a blessing and a pleasure to come to you on our Wednesday evening and minister the word of the Lord to you. And I also want to thank you so much for every response that you have given to us and to hear that people are being blessed, to me that is my joy. To hear that a family is lifted, to hear that uh, somebody is getting something to carry on within the week, within the month, and even for the years to come, it is my blessing. I also want to thank God so much because of the strength he has given us. Believe you me, it has not been easy to minister online, but uh, we are adapting to it. We are thanking the Lord. I also believe that um, it will not stop even after we have gone back to church because um, uh, it is also a way we have been able to minister to people who could not really be able to come and be with us, the four corners of, of our church. I also want to bless the Lord so much because of great reports I've received of people uh, whose life has been changed. Believe you me, that is what keeps me going. And as I have told people, you know, there are people who like uh, challenging pastors and all that. To me, that is not a big thing. My joy is to hear a family transformed. My joy is to hear a soul come to the Lord. My joy is to see this um, young person, this young man, this family come back together. And somebody who has uh, drifted from the way, saying, I want to serve the Lord. May God bless you so much. I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube account, Gospel Celebration Church, Kayole. That is our YouTube account. And uh, also, Pastor Patrick Moredi Nyaga. Today, as I said, it is our Holy Communion service. And uh, what I do and what I like doing is to handle a topic and after that we take communion together in agreement. Remember there is no special way of taking communion. The way, the special way of taking communion is to make sure that the Lord is there, the Spirit of God is there and I can assure you he is here with us. And uh, we do this of course as the Bible says in remembrance of what the Lord did for us. That he died for us, he gave us power and authority. And so when we take communion, we, we commemorate so many things. You know, the doing of the Lord on the cross, the healing that he released to us, the power of, uh, you know, Satan, everything, you know. And so we want to take this communion after this also and um, enjoy the doing of the Lord on the cross and uh, give him all the glory and give him all the honor in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, um, I want to take a, a small digression and uh, for a couple of Wednesdays. I want to deal with different spirits that fight the church and fight the church through the family. Now, these are the spirits the enemy uses. Remember, I said one time that unless you know the weapon of your enemy, you cannot fight him. And uh, it is good that you invest first in knowing the weapon the enemy uses, first knowing your enemy, to the weapon he uses, so that when you fight, you fight knowing what he has. Otherwise, what is the essence of fighting mosquito with a mallet? Why should you come with a grenade to fight a, a mole, you know? You, you say that. And um, when you know how the enemy fights, then you are able to understand what kind of prayer you engage in and what kind of weapon you engage. And therefore, I'll be sharing with you some of these spirits. And uh, after that, we are going to pray together in the name of Jesus Christ. I also want to mention that when I say some of the spirit the enemy uses, there are very many. In the book of Revelation chapter 2, we see the Bible talking about the spirit of Baram and the spirit of uh, Jezebel. And remember, these two were old people, you know, uh, they, they lived in the Old Testament. Jezebel, you know, was married to King Harp, who actually brought a lot of idol prostitution in the house of God. And, uh, in Israel, and uh, the Bible is mentioning many years later, Jezebel in the book of Revelation. In other words, what the Bible wanted us to understand is the spirit of, uh, of this woman or the spirit that walked through this woman is working in the church. I also want to underscore something that spirits never die. The Bible says when an evil spirit comes out of a person, then it goes and wanders looking for a place to stay or for a house to enter. And this, for this matter, a person they can get into. That's why the Bible says it will keep on coming back to see whether the house or the man or the woman they left is serious with a new occupant. If not, then it will get seven more 
come back to the same person, and the Bible says, and the person become worse than he was in the beginning. And that's why you see some people, when they backslide, they, they are worse than the people who have never gotten saved. Why? Because the enemy has to get them deeper in a way that they may not even be able to trace the way back to salvation unless by the grace of God. As I talk about the spirit the enemy uses, I want you to know that um, these spirits are working even today. I said the other day that we must never be casual. I've seen people who live very casual life, you know. They don't care. Even when you tell them, you know, you need to deal with this thing as a spiritual thing. Uh, they don't know that. They don't understand what that means. I want to share some of these things because I've dealt with them. Let me also say that uh, you can, we can argue over issues, you know. But let me tell you, we cannot argue over an experience. You, what I've gone through in life, the things I have dealt with in life have given me an experience that I'm able to speak confidently, you know. I, I mean, I listen to people and, uh, and uh, I, I know when people talk, they talk from different perspectives, others in a form, point of view, others arguing for the sake of it. But there are things I never argue. For example, I was talking to somebody said, you know, a family can be destroyed by spiritual husband or spiritual spouses. And this man says, Apostle, you also believe in these things. I thought you are learned. I thought you know better. I said, you know what? It is true I'm learned. It is true I know better. And the reason why I tell you these things is because I have experienced them. I have dealt with these people. I've, I've seen a family coming down, but by prayer and by helping them, uh, you discover there is no other way you can handle it. And therefore, when I mention about this spirit, I can tell you the truth that I'm dealing with matters, some that I've dealt with, and others the Lord has helped me to discover by his word and by his, the spirit of God. So today I want to deal with the spirit of Babylon. This spirit works in the families and the works in church. They fight the church, the spirit of Babylon. I want to read the book of Daniel chapter number one as I talk about the spirit of Babylon. In the third year of the reign of Joachim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of uh, Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Joachim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. This he carried off to the temple of his God in, Babylon, in Babylonia, and he put in the treasure house of his God. Then the king ordered Aspenas, chief of the court officials, to bring into king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and nobility, young men without any physical defect, and some uh, showing aptitude for every kind of learning and well informed, quick to understand and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and the literature of a Babylonian. The king assigned them daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that, they were to enter the king's service. Praise the Lord. Now, I, I will base my teaching from this, uh, these scriptures we have read, we know, of course, what happened in the Babylonian captivity. As I've seen in other forums, is that um, the Babylonians were not as ruthless as the Syrians. I said that, that uh, they allowed the people of God to worship. And uh, I have said again that it was in the Babylonian captivity where synagogues were, were, were born. And so they went and they did groups and they worshipped God, and those groupings were called synagogues. In the synagogue, what used to happen is that uh, they would uh, share the Torah and they would be, it would be explained to them, and they would sing. The difference between the synagogue and the, te the temple was that in the temple there was sacrifice, but in the synagogue there were no sacrifice. It is also in this, um, in this uh, captivity where... Uh, you remember in the book of Psalms 1, that 7, if I'm not wrong, the, the, when they were in the captivity, they were mocked and they were told, can you sing for us um, some of the songs that you are singing in your, to your God? And they said, how can we sing the songs of our God in a foreign land? Anyway, um, in this captivity, they were, the, the captors were a bit lenient. The Bible says, when the king 
um, Nebuchadnezzar came to the temple, to the house of God. And I want you to see that when he came, he did not just start in any other place. He went straight to the house of God. Any time the spirit of Babylon is, um, is working, it is start with the house of God. And don't you think it is so systematic how things are happening? I, I know we can argue and argue so many things, but to me, I see a lot of issues that um, the enemy want to entrench through, um, through this coronavirus. That um, all of a sudden, the worship will be defined. I think we, if we are not very careful for the church. This is where now the Babylonian spirit is coming in. Remember I said, in the Babylonian captivity, the Babylonians told the children of God, you can go, get a place, um, you know, gather somewhere, worship, and they call it the house of God. And uh, don't you see, there is a correlation in what is happening today. All of a sudden, we are almost agreeing that this is the way of worship. And I said the other day, I believe that it is not really God's will that we do church online. Mm -mm, it is not. The, the godly way the Lord himself would uh, wish that we gather together, fellowship together, the warmth of a brother and a brother. You know, it is God's way that we meet. That's why the Bible says do not neglect the behavior of coming together and uh, fellowshipping together. But almost all of a sudden, it's like we are accepting, you know, it's a new normal. You know, it is not a new normal. God expects that we still meet. And I tell you the truth, the enemy is winning. The, the spirit of Babylon is winning, you know, because it has relocated people from the koinonia, the place where they meet together. I've also listened to many people try to give the theological interpretation. And I tell you the truth, there is no greater interpretation that can tell people that the church has been devolved to the family. Remember, we are not learning new things. We have been praying from our homes. Yeah, we have been praying from our homes. We have been fellowshipping in our home. We had home churches, which were doing well. What is happening right now is the enemy is slowly fighting the church from meeting, you know, the, where the family and the family would meet at the fellowship. And I want to say in the name of Jesus Christ, even as we meet online, let us not think this is a new normal. No. And our government also need to be very careful that you don't kill the, the spirit of, um, of the church by just using this as an excuse. And I want to tell you, I am seeing it's not just our government alone. Many governments are looking at it like we must fight from that. But let me ask you, and uh, I, I don't want to incite, but I want you to look at it carefully. And I tell me, how come that we are not able to meet and worship, but... People can meet in a circle, you know, the market and the fellowship. How come it has been okay for people to meet in the bars? They are, they are responsible drunkards, but we don't have responsible believers. How come that we can meet in other places, in a matatu, yes, but it is not possible for us to meet in church and uh, regulate ourselves? Am I saying there is no corona? Corona is there. But we need to ask ourselves, is there a spirit that is using corona to fight the church? And the spirit of Babylon is one such spirit. It masquerades, it works behind to see that people never meet in the house of God. The king of Babylon entered the house of God. And the first thing he did in disoriented worship, how? He picked the articles in the house of God. That's what he did. And I want to say in the name of Jesus, let our eyes open and let us not miss to pray against the spirit of Babylon. And so those who are listening to me today, I want us to go ahead and make a prayer in the name of Jesus against the Babylonian spirit because this spirit target the house of God first. So in the name of Jesus Christ, can we go ahead for a minute and pray again in the spirit of Babylon that is targeting the house of God, our worship, our house of worship, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We refuse that the enemy will target the 
house of God and the spirit of Babylon will come through the church to destroy. Because once it captures the house of God, it will capture even the government. It may, the government may not know this, but it is a target that is targeting when we destabilize the church, we will also know that we can capture the city in the name of Jesus. So let's pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We pray against the Babylonian spirit. We pray, King of glory, that those that is targeting today, we release an anointing of God. We pray against that in Jesus' name. Oh, if you can pray in tongues, pray in tongues. We are releasing an anointing in the name of the Lord, even in our nation. We, we, we join together with others who are praying in the name of Jesus. Today is 1st of July, and we want to make a declaration that this month of July, there is going to be positive things that will come in the house of God. We are releasing a sound in Jesus' name. We are saying the church of Jesus Christ is coming back again. We choose not to allow the enemy who comes as a good advisor through the king that he can say you worship in your houses even though you cannot gather in the house of God where we can give sacrifices and raise our worship to God you can have synagogues we refuse that in the name of Jesus Christ and we pray Jehovah God hear our prayer God may there be an answer in this month of July King of Glory we pray that Lord COVID-19 coronavirus we pray against it in the name of Jesus Christ and even those who are responsible father we pray that you give a revelation of how it can be handled dear father we make a spiritual intervention through our prayer but we also pray that those who are involved if it will mean a vaccine dear father we pray that shall be found in this month of July let this month be a month of breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Jehovah we bless you we honor you and we magnify your name so we pray against the spirit of Babylon and somebody say amen amen now how does the spirit of Babylon work how does it work? And we have seen, the Bible says, this is what it does. Number one, it enters the house of God and disorient worship. Remember, the house of God is so orderly. Everything has to be in place. The priest knew what was supposed to be where, what was used for what. And so what happened is the king came and they took away the articles from the house of God. The moment what belongs to the house of God is taken away, worship is disoriented. Why would he take the articles? Because the sacrifice would not be done without everything being in its place. Now, what this evil is doing now, what this spirit is doing is to make sure that what belongs to us, what is supposed to be for the house of God is taken away. And that's why I want to tell believers, and especially Christians, don't talk the language of non believers. There are people who have been saying, you know, uh, the churches are open because of money. And I tell you the truth, the church is not open because of your money. The church is open so that your sacrifice can be given. And I tell you the truth, you'll check. Within a short time, there will be so many chaos going on, even as people think they are saving their money. The first thing a believer must know is this. Everything God has given us belongs to him. So nobody can come and they purport to talk on behalf of our God. Everything we have, the money we have, is for the kingdom of God. And therefore, when someone comes and they purport to be an advocate of the poor, what is he doing? He is actually denying you a chance of being faithful to God. So the first thing is take away the articles from the house of God. Make sure that there is no way sacrifice will be given. And I pray in the name of Jesus, you who is listening to me, don't fall into this, this schemes of the enemy. The Babylonian spirit makes sure that you don't sacrifice. I said the other time, when we sacrifice, God responds. I read in the book of Nehemiah, I mean, Nehemiah the, the enemy is asking, will this sacrifice again? You know, and I was asking someone, why was Sanballat and Tobiah concerned about the sacrifice of a people of God? Because he knows when the people of God sacrifice, then God responds. So the spirit of Babylon worked to see that there is no sacrifice in the house of God. And that's why when someone tells me my business is not working, 
One of the spirits that works to see that you don't get profit is the spirit of Babylon. Because he knows, if I deny them money, then I have denied them sacrifice. And if I have denied them sacrifice, then I have denied them uh, breakthroughs in their worship. That is one. The second thing the Bible says, once they are taken, they are taken to another house. Are you seeing that? He took them from the house of God to the house of his God. In other words, what is supposed to be in the temple is taken to another temple. As people celebrate and they say, you know, all of a sudden, you know, Makanisa, we are, they have been stealing from us, churches will close, the pastors will suffer. And by the way, let me say, pastors will not suffer because people are not giving. Actually, it is even a misconception to think that if people don't give, pastors will die. Pastors will not die. Because when God called them first, there was nobody to give. Now, what is happening is, as we celebrate that uh, there are no money in churches, that money that was to be given in the house of God goes to another God. The Bible says, give so that the Lord fight the devourer. Give so that I can protect you. Now, when people don't give, what happens is the enemy takes your money through sicknesses, through um, robberies, through accidents, and the same money that was supposed to be in the house of God will find itself in the house of another God. That's why the articles were taken from the house of God to a house of another God. And I want to pray for you that please don't allow what is supposed to be the house of God to be taken to the house of another God. The supreme God of Babylonian was called Maduk. So don't allow what is supposed to go to Yahweh to go to Maduk. Because I said the other day that when your money is in the wrong altar, the altar that you put your money in speaks on your behalf and they speak on behalf of your finances. So don't be happy to say, oh, we are not in church, so we can't give. And that's why I want to speak to everyone listening to me. As long as God has given you something you can say, he has given me a shilling or 10 shilling, then a shilling belongs to God. Don't say, oh, we are not in church, so we cannot give. Find a way to make sure that your money finds itself in the house of God. The enemy is happy to say, we have disoriented them. Now, we are taking it to our God's house. And that God's house will speak to your money. I pray in the name of Jesus. Anyone listening to me, and you know very well, since church is closed, you have not been able to pay your tithe and you are happy and you feel like you are winning. You are not winning. Your money is going to the wrong order. It will speak against you one day. I pray in the name of Jesus. Hear me so that you know, say, we were not warned. I want to say this so that it is on record, that I did what I was supposed to do as a priest. I pray that your resources will not be taken by Babylonian uh, gods by the spirit of Babylon. I pray in the name of Jesus that if you are here and you can hear me and by chance you never knew, now you know, don't allow the spirit of Babylon steal what belongs to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The other thing the spirit of Babylon does, it manifests through stealing children. Yeah, it steals our children. It targets young people. And it is not just young people, young people in the church. If you are a leader in the church, don't be casual with your children. Don't be casual. You are a pastor, you are a deacon, you are an usher. You serve in the house of God in any way. Your children are noble. If you belong to the house of God and you are born again, your children are noble. Remember the Bible says we are peculiar people, a royal priesthood. Now, the moment the mark of God is in your life, remember, you have become a peculiar person. Am I speaking to somebody? If you are hearing what I'm saying, say amen. You are not just in church for, for, for the sake of it. And that's why in this month of July, I pray the name of Jesus Christ that no child will be stolen from the house of God. I don't know what comes to your mind when you hear of a teenage pregnancies. I don't know what you are thinking about. I know some of the men who impregnated these children will never be there. And therefore, we are children who have no fathers. If we have no fathers, what will happen? They are, the, the, the nation is being messed up. 
And I don't know whether the government is taking this thing seriously. But as a church, I want to say, may we take these things seriously because some of those children are stolen from the church. Amen? And I had a vision, and I had to call our leaders to pray about it. And the day we were finishing our prayer and fasting, that is the day these news were put in the air, you know? And, and the, 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 the dream I saw was so many children having children. And it disturbed me. And I called our leaders. I said, can we pray against them? This spirit that is targeting our girls. And I explained to them, I told them, I saw small children coming to church calling children. And though the church looked full, it was full of children gotten or bathed in the wrong way. And we prayed. And guess what? As we were concluding our prayer and fasting, that's when the news were coming. And I want to pray that all of us take it very seriously. Of course, there are people who are happy to see that because they have a chance to introduce satanic teachings, which are coming through some NGOs. And I love what I heard C.S. Magoa talk about. He says, there are people who are trying to, to entrench some literature in our curriculum. And he was doubting whether they are not the ones sponsoring this. Of course, I may doubt the numbers. But I tell you the truth, I don't want to doubt that the spirit of Babylon is in this. They target young people. Uh, verses 3. The king ordered Aspenas, chief of the court officials, to bring into the king's service some of Israelites from the royal family and nobility. Young men without physical defect and some showing aptitude to every kind of learning. Let me go slowly and slowly because I will I'll deal with this this week. And next week, I'll also be dealing with the spirit of Babylon. You don't want to miss this. Please stay tuned and make sure that you don't miss it. Now, look, this spirit is so systematic. Isaiah and the prophesied about this. And I want to encourage even our nation and our people and our families to take seriously a prophetic word. When the Lord speaks, let us not uh, fight. Let us take prophetic seriously. Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah chapter 39, verse 7, he said, Some of your descendants, not all of them, some, amen, your own flesh and blood, whom will be born to you, will be taken away, and they will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. See, so he's saying this will happen. And now Babylonian spirit targets young people, number one. And uh, I can assure you, so many young people, do not know the spirit that is fighting them. It is the spirit of Babylon. And it is fighting them in a systematic way. If we don't get serious, we are going to lose a very serious generation. And the way to preserve a generation is to make sure that the church is empowered. I wish our government would hear this. Fighting the church is killing a family. And killing the families is killing our own nation. I wish our government would empower the church in the sense of fighting. But we have and, um, a, a very serious case where we see people in government, some of them, fighting the church. I wish you'd know that some of the people that will be preserved are the young people that are in church today. Because the spirit of Babylon is fighting so hard to introduce drugs to our people. It is the church that is fighting drugs. You know, government may fight drugs, but let me tell you, in smaller circles, the best way to fight drugs is by empowering churches and making sure that churches that are doing well, that are fighting this um, uh, menace, they are, they, are, they are empowered. Not fighting them. There are so many young people who I have helped today, they are great men. I may not pardon them and say, say you are in drugs, but I know so many of them. Some of them were in, in, in gangs. You know, I wish the government be empower churches because that is the only way we can fight it. Government cannot fight a spirit. They do not know it. Don't you remember many years ago we had um, a, a commission set by the late President Moy to inquire on devil worship? Can you imagine? And the president tried, but you cannot get a commission to fight devil worship. You can only empower the church to fight it. Government cannot fight devil worship. No, it's a spiritual matter. And the spirit of Babylon likes using young men. Now, let me show you how strategic it has been. We, we are seeing so many young girls who are now are pregnant. Now, what are we saying? 
That girl, her life has been dented. Is it so? Now, this girl will take some time, even if she will recover, there is a mark, there is a scar that she will live to remember. This is happening even as we fight, you know. There is no better constitution that can help people than the word of God. There is no better constitution that can save our children but than the word of God. And that's why I want to say, even as government fight over BBI and all that, I wish it can also think about empowering churches. Because we are going to have a nation that is full of people who can do nothing. Some of the young men doing this, by drugs. Some of them are now teenagers. How are they going to feed their family? You have a baby, you have a, a wife. How will you feed them? Some of them will take weapons and will go to steal. And then what does that mean? We increase uh, prisons, we increase um, police, we increase the cells, but we can deal with this by fighting the spirit of Babylon, by empowering the church, by changing the mindset of people. This cannot be done by, by ministries in the government. This can be done by empowering churches. And I pray in the name of Jesus, you men of God who are listening to me, please don't give up. We have a bigger agenda. As people fight us because of money, please make sure that you don't give up because of what people say. We have a bigger agenda, bigger than an offering. It is to save a soul. It is to deliver a family. It is to deliver our young men in Jesus' name. So this spirit fights young men. The Bible says, and not just any young men. Mm -mm. Young men, and listen, number one, handsome. Even Goliath, when he saw David, the first thing he saw was, his, was, was how handsome he was. He said, wow, how can you send this young man to me? And the Bible says he was handsome. And I know when the spirit of Babylon comes, he looks at our young men. It is in church where we have really handsome young men. Yeah, because some of them have never tasted drugs. Some of them have, have been brought up in a way that you can tell, wow, these people know where they are going. And those are the people the enemy is targeting. I, I will never forget this one day after my telecast gone to serve in a kingdom TV that we are every Saturday night. Uh, receiving a call from a young man. He says, are you a pastor in that church? Yes. I am so happy to see um, your church, you are preaching so well. Then he says in Swahili, guy, na ukona wale mbojo. I would want to come in your church and get one girl as a wife. Can you imagine? Then I ask him, are you born again? He says, no, I don't, I'm not born again, but I love, I would really love to have a girl, a wife from your church. What is he saying? That is the spirit of Babylon that is saying, I can see handsome guys there. I can see very beautiful girls there. In other words, you keep them handsome for us. We will come to steal. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Every young man listening to me, even those who are not in church, God wants you when you are young. We call you to salvation. We call you to the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the spirit of Babylon never take you. May the spirit of Babylon never steal you. In the name of Jesus, even as we take communion today, I pray there will be communion of preservation. It's a communion to hide you from this spirit in the name of Jesus. Christ. And even those who are being stolen and you know you have been a target of the enemy, I call you out of it in the name of Jesus Christ and may the Lord preserve you in Jesus' name. This spirit targets, I have seen, young. So age is a factor. Age is a factor. And you know, Kenya is a young nation. And we should not allow our young men to be stolen. And I also pray, even for a politician, don't use our young men in the wrong way. Don't use them in the wrong way. Our, the strength of our young men is not to throw stones. No. It is not to get guns and kill each other. No. It's not for bloodshed. The strength they have is to serve God. Is to be responsible young men. Young girls in Jesus' name. Father, may you preserve our young people in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of Babylon, may you not steal our young men in the name of Jesus Christ. We oppose you, we resist you in Jesus' name. And what does the Bible say? Let's go further. The Bible says, when you get these young men, get them, of course, I sent from nobility, you know, the royal family. Those that look like they, they know the matters of a kingdom, steal them. 
And some of them I have mentioned from church, from church leaders. Ndiyo watu wao nasema, watoto wa wachungaji do wameharibika zaidi. So that when they want to fight the church, they can use that. So, they say, showing aptitude to every kind of learning. In other words, go to high schools, go to the universities. Because that's where we have the cream of our brain. And that's where evils are introduced. No wonder some, some, some leaders without knowing can fight evangelism in, in schools. But you know, as you fight church from school, the enemy is very busy pumping his literature in the schools. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this spirit will not operate again in our universities. That is where we have children who are showing aptitude to learning. In our schools, in our universities, in our secondary schools. And that's why you see, when this spirit is in operation, there are a lot of strikes, a lot of uh, burning schools, because this spirit is working to see that we destroy the brain of these people. Let's teach them when they are young. When you tell a young man, take a gun and kill, he has nothing to lose. Do you know it's very hard for an old man to be introduced to gang to kill? Because he thinks about this man I'm about to shoot is a father, is a mother. But young men, they just are happy to pull a trigger. And the enemy says, go to them when they are young. Before they understand the value of a soul. Before they understand the value of life. Before they understand the value of a father. Kill them. Use them. Give them drugs. Give them literature to read. And they destroy them. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let's make a prayer. Father, we pray that you may preserve our young men. We pray against the spirit of Babylon that comes through schools, universities, and other colleges. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, preserve our young men in these institutions, Jehovah God. In the name of Jesus, preserve them, Jehovah God. In Jesus' name. Young men who are listening to me, may the Lord preserve you. If you know you are being stolen by this spirit and they are introducing you to bloodshed, they are introducing you to this evil literatures, I pray in the name of Jesus that you gather the courage and call the number on the screen and let us help you, let us deliver you out of this spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Then, when you get them, when you see they are sharp, when you see, they are handsome, you know, when they dress up, when you send them to some places, their gates are open for them. They don't have to explain why they are in that place. By the time you get to know, they were devil's angels, they are inside. That's why they must be handsome. That's why their appearance must be seen in advance. And that's why when the enemy steals young men, the first thing is to destroy their image. Those who carry the image of God. I pray that the image of God in our children will continue rising in Jesus' name. We will continue to increase. When God is pleased with a man, he gives him his image. That's why the Bible says, let us make man in our image. So that that image can speak even before you speak. That's why the enemy is happy to take those who have the image of God. When we say handsome, we are saying he can, godliness is seen in them. Because this is God who makes us handsome or beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. So they are saying, get those who have the image of God. Get those who are handsome, you know. Those who look like our God. Get them out of them. Let's use them. Let's change them, you know. Those who can sing in the church, let's use them. Let's sing, let, them, let them sing in clubs. Let them be short as DJs in those clubs. Do you know many young men who are singing in these clubs who are stolen from the church? A good voice. We call them back in the house of God. We deliver them back in the house of God. We deliver them from the spirit of Babylon. Do we know? Do you know? That's why when you see even those who are doing evil, they, they, are, they are not able to come back because they tested the goodness in the house of God. And they're asking, how can we go back? We know the far we lost it. How we lost it. I pray in the name of Jesus. If you are hearing me and you know you have been a target of the enemy or you have been used by the enemy and the enemy is telling you are too far, you cannot be redeemed. We come to redeem you in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ will set you free again. We come to call you back in Jesus' name. <clears throat> then the Bible says, when you take them, 
take that they have the aptitude, then the Bible says, well informed. They have information at their fingertips. When they argue, they argue in information. Make sure that the information they have about God is not used to transform them. It's used for arguments. That's why when you start talking about even tithe, unasikia vijana wengine wanasimama. Zira asima wa vijana, watu wanasimama. Wanasema it was the Old Testament thing. And they start telling you why you should not. You know? But they are not arguing why you should not use the same money in prostitution. Do you know prostitutes are paid more than a pastor is paid? <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. I, I, I have ever prayed for a girl who told me as a prostitute, she would be given a check of 500,000. 500,000 by a month to go for a trip and come back. You pay a prostitute half a million. But when someone pays 5,000 in church, you rise. Can you imagine? If a pastor is given 20,000, I mean there's acrimony, people are fighting. Pastor is stealing from poor members. But a prostitute paid that, there's no problem. You know what? These people who have information, quick to understand, they are the ones we want. Who can challenge even pastors, you can challenge anyone, uh, bring them in the show, let them tell us how they were in a church and the pastor stole from them. Let them give the facts why serving the Lord is a waste of time. Within a short time, we, we, we will have won if we can use them. Let's use them as our lawyers. Let them argue why abortion should be left to people to decide. It is me who carries the baby. Let me decide what I'm feeling. You know, some of the lawyers who are even following this are children who have been brought up in the church. Yeah, they know the Bible. They even want to argue through the Bible. Why? Because these are the people the spirit of Babylon want to use. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, let our people, our children be secure from this spirit in Jesus' name. Listen, this... Spirit says, get those who are quick to understand. <laughs> Do you know, I have seen, it is very easy for someone to pass, to have masters in maths or even PhD. But the same person fails the test of tithe. 10% just knocking off one digit to your right and the less is your tithe. That is a problem. Why is it so hard to do that? It's because it's a spiritual thing. Now, those who understand, steal them. Leave the others who can understand to the pastor. So that we can be saying, Kanisa, aina mutu wa kutumiwa. That's why you see, even these commissions government said, they don't even come to church. I don't know whether they think they stole enough from us or what. I do not know. Governments... Know that in church we are brain, but really will you get them? Some of the people I listen to the argument, I wonder, why don't you get them from the church? That's why I thank God for Malawi, and I pray that the president of Malawi be preserved. But I also pray that, he is, that God is going to use him well to institute some values in the country that will change that country for good in Jesus' name. Because when, uh, when righteous people eat, people enjoy the Babylonian spirit gets those who are quick to understand. I pray that sharp girls, sharp young men in church will not be stolen. We will not go become lawyers that will be used to propagate abortion and the other evils and the gay marriages and all that. It is the spirit of Babylon that comes to bring the perversion, you know. It, is, it does the inverse. It takes from the house of God to the house of Maduk. Now, you take what is righteous and turn it and use it for the wrong things. That should not be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Once you get this young man, then the next thing you do is introduce them to the literature of Babylonian. And I think that's where I will start next week. That the spirit of Babylon is very systematic. It even has the literature. The moment you are captured, you are introduced into it, the next thing is their literature. 
And I'll be talking about it next week by the grace of God. How the evil literature, Babylonian literature, has penetrated the church and the nation. And without knowing, we are going to have our children change to operate in the language of the Babylonian, the literature of the Babylonians. And I can assure you, by the time we get to know Babylon, it will be within us. I pray in the name of Jesus that God will preserve our young people. You parents who have listened to me, uh, or a young man, share, share this message. Click that button, share this message with the people. Let them understand how the spirit of Babylon is, is fighting the church, is fighting families, is fighting, is stealing our children. And we shall continue next week by the grace of God. Amen. Having said that, um, we want to take communion. And I say, I take communion as per the assignment the Lord has given me. And this communion we are taking is for preservation of our people, of our children, in the name of Jesus Christ. We are doing this in remembrance that Jesus did not die just for old men, but he died even for our children. And therefore, um, as the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 12, that the children of Israel... All of them were to eat the communion together. They were to lock themselves in the house and they eat the lamb, the meat from the lamb together. Today, in the name of Jesus, I want us to take communion together with our children in Jesus' name. But before we do that, I also want to pray that God will release blessing over what you have, the embrace you have, the cup and the, the piece of bread that you have today in the name of Jesus Christ. As we take this, I pray that our children will be free, will be protected from every uh, uh, Babylonian invasion in the name of Jesus, that they are not going to be taken captive to be used in the kingdom of our enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. I also want to pray that our children, our parents, your eyes be open that will be able to see things in the spirit. So we dedicate this, this uh, communion to open the eyes of your understanding, that you are going to be a very wise, very sharp mother or father. As you lead your children, you'll be able to sense when the spirit of Babylon is coming to steal, and you'll be able to fight as a shepherd to fight for your children in the name of Jesus Christ. I also pray that in this month of July, that you enjoy great covering, great anointing, great preservation, you and your family in the name of Jesus Christ. We are taking this communion and we are signing it that we shall count our number at the end of the day and they say none was stolen and none was a victim of the spirit of Babylon. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Can you take some time and pray holding that emblem? Make a prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. You young men, you are listening to me. You young lady, pray with me. In Jesus' name. That you shall not fall a victim of the spirit of Babylon. You mother, pray for your children. That Lord, as we take this communion. You father, pray with me. In the name of Jesus, that this communion is a communion of preservation. In this month of July, we commit it to you. We pray that supernatural things will happen. The spirit of God will work mightily through us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh yes, Sakatoria, Repo, Shakalaba, Kiente, Remosia, Ketekezo, Yande, Raka, Tababo, Shienema, Yetekeka. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We pray for these embers, dear Father. Let them carry the power, the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you are going to manifest yourself. Even as we take this communion, we are speaking preservation. We are speaking the power of God upon our children as well. As the children of Israel take communion together, we also take together and we say the angel that comes to destroy in the name of the spirit of Babylon. He is not going to touch any one of us in the name of Jesus. Our children will be mighty in the land and that they will lean, dear Father, and that they will speak according to your word in the name of Jesus Christ. And so Lord, I pray that may this communion carry the power to preserve. 
Lord, I also pray for this month of July in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be testimonies of your doing. I pray that, Lord, the spirit that come, that takes people to captivity. I pray there shall be no captive in the name of Jesus. And this communion, Lord, I assign it for freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. For freedom from any captivity, whether of mind or physically, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now let us take the bread together. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We do this, Father, in remembrance that you have done it for us. And on the cross in Calvary, loan everything. Every price was paid. And therefore, no one can pay claim in Jesus' name. The cup together. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless you. And we give you honor. In Jesus' name, may you enjoy a blessed night. May your children be safe from any spirit of Babylon. May you enjoy covering of the Lord Jesus Christ upon your life. Your children are safe. Your young men are safe in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I ask you in the name of Jesus, let's sacrifice to God. Go to your phone now, get a good offering, let us sacrifice to God. The numbers on the screen, I tell people, I never shy off telling people to give because I know one day you remember that the giving you did saved your family, saved your people in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a virtue, it's a blessing. Let us sacrifice to God. The devil will not take what belongs to you, to the enemy, to the Babylonian temple. What belongs to God, belongs to God. Send your tithe, send your offering, and the Lord bless you. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs>